Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner, available for code reviews, gun tracking, and hopefully someday soon again on-site training. In this episode, I'm going to follow up with something that I gave a little sneak peek to yesterday, not yesterday, last week, when I aired my episode on C++ 11 and 7 through 17 features that we still cannot use in 2021. And I would like to talk about garbage collection. Now, you might not think of garbage collection as a C++ feature. In fact, if you are used to programming in C++ and follow, well, the best practices in my best practices book, then uh, you're doing things like RAII, which stands for resource allocation is initialization, and you are using those capabilities to automatically manage memory for you instead of having to worry about a bunch of manual memory management. But it turns out that there was a point in time when the members of the standards committee thought that it would be a good idea to have actual garbage collection in C++. Now, as far as I can tell, this was meant to actually be something like Java's garbage collection, where the runtime and the system would be able to periodically say, is there memory that is currently reachable? And if the memory that has been allocated is not currently reachable, then it could either be detected or cleaned up in some way. Now, if you watched the last episode, you would see here that as of libc++ uh, 3.4, libstud c++ 6, and Visual Studio 19, which is Visual Studio 2015, the standard library here actually implemented this garbage collection reachability as a no-op. Now I'm going to scroll up to see where we have here this garbage collection reachability based leak detection. The compiler side of this was never implemented by any compiler as far as I'm aware. This is N2670 and this is N2670. They both refer to the same paper. So let's just go ahead and try to take a tour of this paper. I've looked at it briefly and so we're just kind of going to be looking through this together. Again, no implementation, so it's kind of hard for us to play with it. But we can see that this paper was actually published in 2008, which is interesting because that's three years before C++11 was standardized, so they still didn't have an implementation after three years and still went ahead and kept it in the standard. This one actually makes me laugh here which says this is a proposal to implement the Kona garbage collection compromise. So uh, uh, if you don't know anything about the standards committee, this is going to come across as a little odd sounding, but Kona is where there is a standards committee meeting uh, approximately once a year. It used to be, I believe now the goal would have been once every other year. Now I'm pulling up street map here, open street map. Uh, just in case you didn't know, Kona is actually a city, here we go, um, a very small city that happens to be on the big island of Hawaii. So once a year in the past, now the goal is every other year, the standards committee would have a meeting in Hawaii. Of course, because why not if you can? Um, the Kona meeting, which was supposed to be scheduled for February of 2021, has already been canceled a long time ago due to COVID, and that really shouldn't be surprising to anyone. It was coincidentally the first standards committee meeting that I was planning to attend. Obviously, that is not going to happen. So if someday in the future, after travel opens back up again, you think to yourself, I really want to go to a standards committee meeting, you can look to see when the next Kona meeting is, if that is interesting to you. So there was, for some reason, without going back and looking at the full history here, a reason to have a compromise here in Kona in 2008 to establish what uh, garbage collection was going to be in C++11. And we have the other papers here. It says it borrows a few small pieces from the preceding garbage collection proposals. The purpose is to support both garbage collected implementations and reachability based leak detectors. Now, if you use address sanitizer and Visual Studio Clang or GCC these days, then it does its own kind of leak detection things as well. 
which uh, that more just looks for memory that is still allocated when the program exits. This should have been able to theoretically say, hey, there's memory that's been allocated that no currently living pointer can actually find. Uh, it is done by giving undefined behavior to programs that hide a pointer. This is interesting, this hide a pointer. For example, by XORing it with another value. So if you created a pointer and then somehow hit it, uh, lots of people will do things like they'll use the the lower few bits of a pointer because with alignment rules and such on modern platforms, you uh, generally aren't going to allocate on byte boundaries. You're going to allocate on some larger boundary, some word or larger boundary. So even today, programs will use some portion of a pointer value to store some other data. Now, if you did that kind of thing here, you would have and been invoking undefined behavior in your compiler that actually supported gar garbage collection and reachability. For the same reason, reachability-based leak detectors may erroneously report that such programs leak memory. Okay. And then there's a note here about the quick exit facility with leak detection, whatever. So it was a partially standards library implemented and partially our um, compiler implemented. So we had safely derived pointers and the idea is that we have traceable pointers in our program that the compiler is able to actually say is this or the runtime is able to say is this pointer something that can trace a memory allocation or not and it does allow for some ability to reinterpret cast between pointers and integers and such and still be able to have a safely derived traceable pointer a pointer that is not safely derived pointer is dereferenced or deallocated, and the referenced complete object is of dynamic storage duration that has not been previously declared reachable, the behavior is undefined. So if you wanted to hide your pointers, then you had to use this uh, reachable and unreachable. Here we go. Declare reachable. We can say this, this pointer, this memory location, this is reachable. I promise to you, runtime, this pointer is reachable. Or we can say, I promise to you, this is unreachable. Then you have the ability to garbage collect it or tell me that I've got a memory leak or something like that. So these standard library features, declare unreachable, declare reachable, they're implemented by all of our standard libraries today. We saw that, those are no ops. So let's play with that real quick. All right, so I am on GCC. I am in C++ 20 mode. Let's see what happens. I'm just gonna allocate a new int. And there we go. I have just declared to the compiler and to the C++ runtime that this integer i is still reachable, which is obviously a lie, right? Because once the pointer to i here, the i pointer goes out of scope on line eight, I have no way of reaching this, but I could have told the compiler, please don't clean this up for me. It is in fact still reachable. And this is a no op in your standards uh, compliant compiler today because no one actually implemented the garbage collection. So it's certainly not going to garbage collect it out from you right now, now is it? So I don't think there's much else here to say about it. Uh, let's see, get pointer safety returns an enumeration value indicating the implementation's treatment of pointers that are not safely derived. Oh, this is interesting. Returns relaxed if pointers that are not safely derived will be treated the same as pointers that are safely derived for the duration of the program. So STD pointer safety. All right, so yes, my standards library does implement the garbage collection standard correctly. In fact, it's telling me that it's going to be doing relaxed pointer safety and not actually cleaning anything up. So at least that is correct. And then there's a whole bunch of other wording here for the actual uh, standard implementation for it. So I, I think that's enough. Yes, C++ has garbage collection. No, it doesn't do anything meaningful because no one implemented it and I would not at all be surprised if we see it removed in C++ 23. So, well, thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly.